हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू ऑल सो लेट अस कंटिन्यू द फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स लेसन ओके इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी विल स्टडी व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट स्टेप्स इन्वॉल्व्ड इन इनिशियल पब्लिक ऑफरिंग ओके आईपीओ सो लेट मी टेल यू वी आर स्टडिंग द इक्विटी फाइनेंसिंग राइट नाउ दिस टॉपिक इज गोइंग ऑन ओके एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन सम ऑफ द बेसिक्स ऑफ इक्विटी फाइनेंसिंग इन द प्रीवियस टू वीडियोस इन दिस वीडियो वी विल स्टडी अबाउट द इनिशियल पब्लिक ऑफरिंग विच इज़ अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एंड वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड हाउ इट एक्चुअली हैपन्स नाउ इनिशियल पब्लिक ऑफरिंग हैपन्स वैन अ कंपनी डिसाइड्स टू गेट लिस्टेड ओके टू लिस्ट और ऑफर इट शेयर्स टू जनरल पब्लिक राइट दिस वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन सो प्रीवियसली द पब्लिक वॉज अ प्राइवेट होल्डिंग ओके नाउ इट वॉन्ट्स टू बिकम अ पब्लिकली लिस्टेड कंपनी दैट इट इट वॉन्ट्स टू गेट लिस्टेड ऑन अ स्टॉक एक्सचेंज सो बेसिकली इट ऑफर्स शेयर्स टू द जनरल पब्लिक एंड द प्रोसेस बाय विच इट हैपन्स इज नोन एज आई पी ओ इनिशियल पब्लिक ऑफरिंग द फर्स्ट स्टेप एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट स्टेप ऑफ आई पी ओ इज द रेड हेरिंग प्रोस्पेक्टस ओके रेड हेरिंग प्रोस्पेक्टस इज प्रिपेयर बाय द कंपनी बाय टेकिंग हेल्प ऑफ यू नो एन अदर इंस्टीट्यूशन दैट आई टॉक अबाउट ओके एंड दिस इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप दैट इज डन आई एक्सप्लेन टू यू वॉट इट इज बिफोर बिफोर द फर्स्ट स्टेप देर इज अ स्टेप जीरो विच नो विच हैज टू बी डन बिफोर द फर्स्ट स्टेप एंड दैट इज नोन एज अपॉइंटिंग एन इन्वेस्टमेंट बैंकर ओके सो दिस इज द इंस्टीट्यूशन विच हेल्प्स द कंपनी विच वॉन्ट्स टू गेट लिस्टेड इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिपेयर द रेड हेरिंग प्रोस्पेक्टस एंड ऑल्सो इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ गेटिंग लिस्टेड ओके सो इन्वेस्टमेंट बैंकर is an institution we have already studied about it right it is uh, also known as merchant bankers it is also known as merchant bankers and these are the institutions which provide the underwriting facilities to uh, you know different companies whenever it comes to uh, issuing of stocks or shares so uh, appointing an investment banker is done by the company as a step zero as a initial step and after that with the help of this investment banker the company which wants to get listed prepares the red herring prospectus now what is red herring prospectus like let us have a look at that so red herring prospectus so basically it is a registration document so it is a kind of book okay it is a it is a volume of book okay in that okay what is mentioned so uh, you know everything about that company is mentioned you know what business that company is doing okay what are their revenues what were their profits in the previous years okay so everything what is their business in which different sectors what are their plans for expansion okay uh, then what is the scope for future growth so everything about that company is mentioned in this red herring prospectus it is prepared by the investment banker and the company and it is placed before the common public to evaluate the ipo so basically this is a public document it is available on the company's website it is also submitted to the sebi okay securities and exchange board of india okay and common public can open this red herring prospectus and they can read about the company its history its business its revenue its profit etc it has all the information about company's business and about the ipo so okay what is what is the uh, you know company's plan to uh, go for the ipo for the initial public offering about that also things are mentioned only two things are not mentioned in red herring prospectus that is kept a secret it is very important and what is that the first thing is that what is the price of offer okay so what is the price at which the company is going to offer its shares so that is not declared in red herring prospectus it is kept as a secret and second one is a quantum of share so how many shares they are going to offer so basically number of shares okay and price of share price of each share so these things are not declared in red herring prospectus it is kept a secret then after that the next step is cooling off period okay so uh, you know the cooling off period may be for one month or 15 days or you know maybe two months also so during this cooling off period the sebi the securities and exchange board of india which is a regulator of the stock markets it verifies the facts disclosed by the company in the red herring prospectus so it takes time to verify whether the company has declared all the things correctly or not its profits correctly or not etc so this is known as due diligence procedure so sebi does all that work after that the next step is that the company applies to a stock exchange where it wants to float the ipo right now the ipo has to be floated in some market so that market is basically the stock exchange so stock exchange is a kind of marketplace 
it is a kind of market where you can go and buy shares okay where you can sell shares so it has to apply to a stock exchange so in india there are two famous stock exchanges bombay stock exchange and national stock exchange okay we will talk about this later but it can apply to any one of this it depends on the company so it has to select the stock exchange also after that the most important part is creating a buzz okay advertise the ipo so the company has to do a lot of advertisement that okay we are going to do ipo and so that the general public knows about it correct so in the newspapers in the news in the you know different channels and through different ways even sometimes the bollywood stars are uh, you know hired to do these advertisements so they create a buzz so that the general public know about it and finally the step is disclosure of price okay so of once the ipo is declared so they will disclose the price at which it is offering the share okay this is the offer price okay this is also known as the par value or face value so the price at which the company is going to offer the shares is now disclosed to the public so there are two ways of disclosing the price one is a fixed price issue okay so what the company tells okay we are going to issue uh, one share at rupees 1000 so this is a fixed price company says that this is the price that we have fixed and there is another method which is most common method and which is mostly used method and it is known as the book building issue okay so they are building books okay now what is the meaning of this so in that the company will not declare a fixed price it will say it will give a band of price for example it will say that our price will vary from 800 to 1200 okay so it will give this band of prices okay so upper ceiling is given which is 1200 and lower lower limit is also given and company will say that okay you know we are going to offer our share in between this band and investors are asked to bid within this band okay now investors are asked key okay now you bid you start uh, you know bidding for uh, the price at what price you will be willing to buy our shares so and this is open for three days usually so for three days bidders are asked to bid see now the actual sale is not starting this is only done to discover the price okay to disclose the price now actual selling actual bidding is not happening this bidding is only that you know to show the intention of people uh, you know at what price they are willing they are ready to buy these shares okay now you know in this way the book is built book is what book is a collection of bids disclosed to all the bidders and potential investors so book is built for example see if the company is going to sell say one lakh shares okay if one lakh shares are uh, the company is going to sell say for example the bid is like that okay so for ten thousand shares somebody has bidded uh, say the price of 900 okay for uh, another uh, 50,000 shares somebody has bidded a price of say 850 okay for another 20,000 shares somebody has bidded the price of 830 and uh, finally uh, for another 20,000 shares somebody has bidded a price of 810 so this is the cutoff price so this cutoff price is declared to the public that okay this they go yeah one lakh share complete okay the one lakh share are completed 10,000 plus 50,000 plus 20,000 plus 20,000 so this is the cutoff price 8, 810 so this this is declared to the public okay to the all the bidders and also to the potential investors and this process is known as price discovery so now the company is able to discover the price okay we had fixed the band 800, uh, 800 to 1200 uh, so the bidding which actually people are willing to give price to it has happened and people are willing to pay 810 this is the cutoff price so the company in a way has discovered the price and it is a kind of declaration also now now the actual time of bidding will come but before that insider trading is prohibited okay insider trading meaning the promoters of the company and people who are working within the company who have the confidential information about the company which is not public okay they cannot bid they are pre it is done to prevent the price manipulation and finally issues are sold on the primary market finally the ipo is open now people can again bid okay it is open for five days now people can again auction and now people can again participate in the auction they can bid okay i want to purchase uh, five shares at you know somebody wants to invest uh five thousand rupees so he will bid for uh five shares at say rupees thousand so again now people are uh, bidding here and ipo shares are allotted to bidders uh, okay usually it takes 10 to 12 days company becomes listed so once this bidding closes after five days after five days another 10 to 12 days uh, the company takes to allot the bidders by 
doing all the procedure by knowing how many bids are there how many subscriptions are there like that and in case a uh, ipo is oversubscribed for example if the company was going to sell 1 lakh shares but 4 lakh people okay for, for subscription is for 4 lakh shares so it is oversubscribed okay it is oversubscribed it is in fact subscribed four times so whenever such four times subscription is there so shares are proportionate uh, proportionately allocated it is not allocated on first come first serve basis for example if subscription is four times so the person who had bid for 12 shares he will get three shares okay one fourth of the shares he had bid for so this is how it is done now next thing is eipo this is a small concept okay so see what used to happen initially the ipo used to take place in a paper application form okay so people had to go to mumbai and actually they had to submit the paper application but now the investors can bid using the internet okay so this is known as electronic ipo what happens it reduces the time after bidding so initially it used to take 10 to 12 days now the time of allotment has reduced to 2 to 6 days so in 2 to 6 days your shares will come into your account okay and it also resulted into more reach to investors okay more in people from small towns also now they can invest initially they had to go to mumbai in order to do this application but now they can do it from their hometown also okay and also this paper cost and everything this is saved of the company so it is efficient it is more eco friendly and you know it is it is it is faster so uh, this is how the ipo is done and e ipo is the electronic ipo now let us uh, understand a few terminologies okay so we will discuss a few important terminologies uh, which are there uh, when it comes to ipo and uh, you know share markets in general so the first terminology is face value or par value okay this i have already explained to you but again i'll repeat here so face value or par value is a value at which the shares are offered during the ipos okay so basically as i have told you the company if it is it if it goes for fixed price ipo so if if it is offering share for rupees 1000 so this 1000 is the face value of the share okay and this value is also mentioned in a company's books okay in its accounts or and the share certificates that the face value of the share is 1000 at the time of ipo the price was 1000 at which the company was offering it and after that because of secondary market trading uh, the price can go up or down so uh, that depends then the second terminology that i wanted to discuss is sold at discount okay uh, sometimes we say that you know shares are sold at discount so what is the meaning of discount it means that if shares are sold at a price lower than the par value in secondary markets or during ipo under subscription see for example if the company wanted to sell 1 lakh shares okay but now the people are bidding and the price was say 1000 per share but now people are bidding only 800 rupees or 810 rupees maximum and you know the ipo is under subscribed so only 90000 shares the company is able to sell in the ipo so uh, you know uh, forcibly it will have to sell the shares at a you know lowest price that was bidded so for example the lowest price was 800 so you know now the shares are getting sold at discount it is not getting sold at the par value so uh, and it can happen in secondary market also for example after the ipo uh, in ipo the par value was 1000 but after ipo people started feeling that this company is going to make loss and it started selling its shares so now the price of share is falling so 900 maybe 950 so in secondary market the price of share is lower than the par value of the share so this is known as sold at discount similarly meaning of sold at premium means it is you know opposite of sold at discount so shares are sold at a price more than the par value during ipo or secondary markets so you know ipo if it if during ipo there is over subscription then you know shares of rupees 1000 par value may get sold at 1100 also or 1050 or 1200 okay it depends on how much people are enthusiastic about that particular ipo or that particular company now what is the meaning of market value so market value is the current value so what is the price of the share today okay if you are going to buy if you are going to buy some shares for example you want to buy a share of hdfc bank okay and uh, the original par value of share was say rupees 2000 but today the market value of that share is say 5000 
so this is the market value what price uh, you know the market is offering you today if you want to buy one share of hdfc so it is a daily value of shares being traded on a stock exchange changes depending on the demand and supply of the stock so how much people are demanding it and how much it is getting supplied so same demand supply equation will happen here if there is more demand price will be more if uh, you know there is less demand price will be less so market value can be at discount or at premium depending on you know how much is the demand then the next concept uh, again a very important concept that i want to discuss is share split or stock split okay split means tukde karna okay to break so basically what is the meaning of share split share split means changing the face value or in fact reducing the face value okay reducing the face value of shares company divides the existing shares into units of lower face value for example the face value of one share one share was rupees 5000 okay now the company wants to divide one share into two shares so one it will divide this one share into two individual shares of 2500 each okay this is known as share split so shares have been split into two one share is getting split into two shares of the lower face value okay example one is to four stock split means every for every one share now investors will get four shares with the reduced uh, face value for example if now the share price is rupees 40 after split the investor will get four shares and the price of one share will be rupees 10 so basically the overall capitalization remains the same okay previously there was one share worth rupees 40 now there are four shares okay of 10 each multiply by 4 so again the person has share worth rupees 40 so worth does not change okay this market capitalization does not change this is known as market capitalization the total value value of shares is known as market capitalization so because of stock split directly the market capitalization does not change it may change indirectly because of increase in demand and supply uh, you know that equation that dynamics so market cap the value may increase indirectly because of increase in demand or something like that but it does not uh, affect the market capitalization directly okay and why is stock split done stock split is done to increase liquidity in the market say for example if a company one share price is say rupees 1 lakh okay now if that may happen so that price of one share is 1 lakh rupees so if there is a small investor and if he wants to invest in that company so minimum one share he will have to buy if he does not have 1 lakh rupees how will he buy the share of this company so what this company can do this company can split this 1 lakh share into 10 shares okay it can do the split of 1 is to 10 so now each share will cost rupees 10000 so this individual shares now can be sold at 10000 okay one share so basically uh, you know even you know smaller smaller uh, uh, retailer uh, retail investors can also now participate so it will increase the participation and also people can sell easily also for example if uh, the share was 1 lakh rupees one share somebody wanted to sell it but you know there were very few customers very few people who who were demanding it now if the price is reducing he can sell uh, this 10 shares of 10000 each to 10 different different people okay so uh, this is the benefit of stock split and it doesn't directly affect the company's market capitalization this i have already explained to you okay so uh, this was about this this video will continue equity financing in the next video also